Adobe's Illustrator's Live Paint function allows you to essentially recolor things in very much a kind of paint by numbers kind of way. You can pick colors and fill with a paint bucket like you would in a much simpler piece of software. Um, and once completed it, I'll apply those as a vector. So to do this, we do have to prepare our image first. I'm gonna go ahead and, using the right tool, go ahead and grab and select um, everything that I've got here. And actually, I only want to recolor and repaint the artwork itself, not this background box. So I'm gonna hold Shift and select that background box just to deselect it or remove from the selection. So these are the areas I want to work with. Live paint only works if you convert these objects into a live paint object first, which is slightly different to an ordinary vector. So I'm gonna to go to the object menu, top left, and come down to live paint and make. We know this has worked when the little um, kind of handles on the corner of the box, the bounding box, get this little kind of um, star crosshair icon in them and we're ready to start treating this as a live paint object. If we deselect it, it will still work as we expect it to. Then in the side hand toolbar, underneath the shape builder tool, if we click and hold, we get the live paint bucket. Now as I hover over parts of this image, you're gonna see really quickly that every part of it, every piece of the image that I hover over that was within my live paint object that I've made gets this little red bounding line as I hover over it. And that's allowing me to click in and recolor each of those areas. So I'm gonna start quickly kind of trying to uh, repaint part of this now. I'm gonna choose my colors first. I'm gonna go for beginning to choose a kind of tea color first. So it's got kind of like slightly pinky orangey brown going on something around here. We can debate for a long time like what the correct color of tea is. Uh, mine would be somewhere around there, maybe a little more orangey. That'll do for now. And I'm gonna fill part of this mug of tea uh, with a nice tea color. I'm gonna put a highlight on the surface of the liquid there by coming up and choosing a lighter version of that same color. And I'm ready, I can start to kind of pick up and use some of these colors. I'm also gonna grab a darker version in a minute. Let's hold Alt on the keypad. And so long as I'm using this paint bucket tool from the live paint tool over there, if I hold Alt down, it's gonna give me a color picker to um, pick up a color that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna go back to that tea color and use that on the biscuit down here as well to create a bit of kind of um, coherency across the consistency across the design. And now I want to outline these objects, not in black, but in a color that works with the design. So I'm gonna again, double click my color palette here and go for a deep dark brown that is from the same tea color I've used so far and recolor all of the outlines for the tea mug, for the biscuit, for the crumbs on the floor with that kind of uh, deeper brown. And we're gonna use that in a few places. I've chosen these colors because the kind of the orangey brown tones from the tea are nicely balanced by this soft, almost turquoisey blue in the background. They work really nicely together at the moment. I'm happy with that. I'm also gonna use this darker brown up here for the bubble that contains this lettering. So let's get that in place and then move on to a couple of other things. I want the mug and some of this lettering to be a nice bright light milky color. So again, I'm gonna come back to the tea color I've chosen, double click on the color palette and come right that way up to a pale kind of off white. Let's fill the mug with that and the handle. And I'm also gonna kind of balance the image by making the there's text in that color as well. This is looking quite nicely balanced at the moment. And the last thing I want to change is some of these last piece of lettering. At the moment, they're still black and that kind of really jars with the rest of the image. So I'm gonna pick the blue background color. I'm gonna use that first of all for the lettering within that bubble, which balances that quite nicely. But I'm just gonna choose a nice deep dark tone of that blue for always, for and T again. So I've only got a handful of colors across the image. And at that point, my design is basically done. And that is all there is to it. The last thing I need to do here is that this is still a live paint object in the center. And I do want to convert that back to being full vectors. Like this, it won't allow me to copy and paste it elsewhere without problems occurring. All I need to do is select my live paint group and up here, once again, press the expand button as it did before, it's gonna leave those as vectors all grouped together, ready to use wherever I want to. In fact, that works really nicely against a white background now as well, but I do like it against the blue, so we'll leave that there. Um, and I can ungroup those items if I want. I added some final touches in this previous version, which you can see is obviously very, very similar as a trial run. Um, I actually used, if we look at the differences here, there's a slight gap between the T and H. 
I just use a brush there to close that gap off. Um, I also created some simple little ellipse shapes that you can see here to create some shadows underneath the objects just to ground them very slightly. And I like the touches that brings to design. But ultimately, that's a really nice way of going from, from back to uh, Photoshop over here, from going from our original pencil or kind of copic marker sketch in this case, cleaning it up in Photoshop, taking it into Illustrator, using image trace to get a black and white vector, and then using the live paint tools to recolor it. Good way to go from practical work to digital.